All right, welcome back. The International Press Center has kicked against attempts by the government to criminalize journalism in the country, urging media professionals to fight before it is too late. And media houses end up becoming an extension of the Ministry of Information. The executive director of the center, Landry Arogudadi, noted that the two major bills before the National Assembly, which could cripple press freedom in Nigeria, are the National Broadcasting Commission Amendment Bill and the Nigerian Press Council Act Amendment Bill. And also, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, CERB, has sued the federal government and the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, over the directive to all broadcast stations in the country to suspend the use of Twitter. Uh, we have joining us Kolawa Leolua, Deputy Director of CEREP. We are expecting David Huden, a journalist, to join us also in the course of uh, the show. Many thanks uh, once again, uh, Kolawa Leolua, Dari. Uh, let's start off with uh, what uh, we read all over the press uh, just yesterday. Uh, that's your organization, uh, CEREP. Uh, a serene, the Minister of Information, uh, Lai Mohammed, uh, the federal government, that's uh, even uh, the president, over this issue of um, alleged gagging of the press uh, through the suspension of uh, Twitter on their platforms. Uh, just run us through it so we can understand you better. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to provide context, the suit that was filed last week at the federal court is different from the one filed uh, before now at the ECOWAS court. The suit filed at the Air Force Court challenges the ban itself, and that was filed uh, before the um, uh, the judicial staff workers called on their strike. We had also filed uh, an application for provisional measures, which would qualify for an interim, interim order uh, to stop the government from going ahead with the ban or prosecuting or harassing anyone uh, from using a Twitter. Uh, but the suit that we filed last week is different. It speaks uh, to the attempt of the National Broadcasting Commission uh, to compel media and broadcast houses in Nigeria to deactivate their Twitter account. And that is why we have approached the Federal High Court to set, to set aside that patently unlawful direction from the NDC. And it is, uh, it is important to note that the directive is not backed by any law, and it's clearly uh, uh, unlawful on the part of the NDC, even though it purports to act under the NDC code. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, what happened at the National Assembly just last week. Uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, appeared before the House of Representatives where they are uh, planning to, you know, amend them. Uh, five different bills, specifically two of them, you know, uh, hit home. That's um, the Press Council um, Act and, of course, um, the um, NBC um, Amendment um, Act. Let's talk about this for one uh, minute and uh, let's uh, know how you react because a whole lot of reactions have thrilled uh, that particular development uh, because people People are seeing it as um, another way of censoring journalists in Nigeria. And specifically, the minister is asking that um, social media and, and, of course, its regulation be added to the NBC. Um, uh, what we are seeing that this government has done or tried to do is to generally clamp down on freedom of expression. That aspect, there is a, there's an aspect of that clamp down, of course, that affects the media as, as, an, as, as a key part of the Nigerian state. But the totality of the actions stifles freedom of expression, both from citizens and from media houses. And the antecedent of this government speaks to that fact. The NBC has time and again um, whipped up uh, the NBC court to. Uh, uh, to stop media houses from doing their job. And that is on the aspect of the media. And so we've seen also the attempt at uh, having some kind of legislation to legislate free speech, not necessarily social media. All these attacks we must understand is against freedom of expression. But there are component parts to each of these actions. We've seen the social media bill, we've seen the hate speech bill, and we've seen the NGO bill, all of which have failed at the public hearing stage, at the National Assembly. And so it is not surprising that coming on the heels of the purported Twitter ban, we've seen this government do this. And it's also important to stress that this is not a major reaction. This is a well coordinated plan on the part of this administration uh, to, to, to 
to prevent whatever they perceive as critical views of government. Of course, this is ill informed. This is not in the interest of democracy or, or in the interest of good governance in itself. So, coming on the heels of the Peter Bar, you've seen government uh, attempt to amend the press council bill, which have which been thrown out previously before now, and purporting to amend the NBC Act to give it powers to regulate the social media. But that is not that these moves are not in the interest of democracy. Democracy, of course, implies that people participate, not only at elections, but in the governance that follows thereafter after elections. And one of the ways they can do this, of course, to have an open line to not only to talk to those who are in government, but also to express their views, whether positive or negative, about various aspects of governance. And social media being a very key tool to do that. We see no basis for this regulation of social media, and it ultimately is going to be anti-democratic. And so what we we'll respect from the National Assembly at this point is to throw out those bills as they have done in the past and not uh, let them sail through. All right, um, Kola Wale, I just want to read out uh, uh, something that uh, what just happened at the National um, Assembly uh, just uh, today because the Senate uh, also reacted officially and they said, um, okay, let me just read them verbatim here. Uh, the Senate has officially re reacted to the controversy trailing the move to amend the National Broadcasting Commission Act and the Press Council Act. Senator representing Oshu Central and Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Publicity Bashir Ajibola said the amendment the amendment of the two bills was not meant to cripple press freedom. At the public hearing into a bill to amend the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission uh, Act organized by the House Committees on Information, Ethics and Values, Minister of Information and Culture Mohammed uh, has asked the lawmakers to include interna internet broadcasting under the control of the NBC. But speaking today uh, in Abuja, uh, the National Assembly uh, said uh, that claimed that it was meant to check excesses of those he called reckless and irresponsible media establishment. Do you agree with that? Specifically, he said it was meant to check the excesses of those he called reckless and irresponsible media establishment. Of course, that cannot be true. And if it is to check what he called reckless, why do we need to criminalize this speech? and people expressing their opinion, would that mean there are no laws that take care of whatever is deemed reckless, either by a media practitioner or by any citizens? The last time I checked, Nigeria has laws against libel and defamation. Mm -hmm. They are civil wrongs, and they could be touched in, in prosecuting such cases. We've seen the way the, the, the government has used the Cyber Crimes Act. It's seemingly innocent against citizens who have expressed their view, even going as far as using the Terrorism Act, which of course was not, was not designed to handle such offenses, uh, charging uh, people before the courts for terrorism, merely for expressing their views. Is this, is this the government or agencies you want to give power to regulate the press, the fourth estate of the realm, given that uh, very important task in Section 22 of the Constitution, not only to hold government to account, but as a tool to disseminate information and freely between the, and the citizens and the government. It, the statement that created to the National Assembly of Force cannot be true. We only see this as a means of, uh, of fighting against wrong expression, um, stopping any form of dissenting views, and silencing any kind of perceived critical views uh, that a government do not find acceptable. All right, granted, um, your organization, SARAP, has actually sued um, the federal government, even uh, uh, the president, um, in all of these um, issues. Uh, but then, what would you really advise some um, journalists to do? Because uh, the federal government comes out and says uh, that uh, journalists should not, or media houses should actually take down their Twitter account in as much as there's no law, you know, to that effect. Uh, what, do, what can they do? Do they just have to, you know, follow hook, line, and sinker, and then just abide, or they should uh, maybe oppose and wait for some, uh, you know, messiah, maybe like the, the Seraph and other organizations are doing right now? Yeah, we cannot afford to wait for a messiah. It can be too late. It can either be late in common or not come at all. We are apparently the architects of our own destiny. And in this case, any unlawful act of the government cannot stand. 
What Serap has done is to approach the courts to give a formal decision on this point, because you can call it a formal pronouncement. But we know as it stands that there is no law that permits the National Broadcasting Commission to do what it has purported to do, uh, giving directive to media houses uh, to, to stop uh, using Twitter to activate their accounts. In the first place, that, that's the private business of these media houses. Whether they choose to use Twitter or any kind of social media platform in furtherance of the work that they do, that, in, from that directive is patently unlawful. And we are very hopeful that the court will make the necessary directive. As it stands, there is no law that gives the NDC power to do that. Okay, let me butt in here. Let me butt in here, caller. You just said there is no law, you know, that empowers the federal government to go on with such a directive. Knowing all of this, judging by the fact that we have a minister of justice, we have a minister of justice, an attorney general of the federation, who would come out and say that Nigerians should not even use, uh, uh, you know, other alternatives, you know, to get to go on the Twitter platform. Where is this really taking us or keeping us as a country? Are we going back to the medieval ages or what exactly or where exactly are we headed? I was about to make that point. Mm. Now we've seen also an instance from the pronouncements of the Attorney General of the Federation where he was credited to have said that any Nigerian fan to be using Twitter uh, by other means, possibly by use of a VPN, will be prosecuted. But from the popular out to the opera by the people, and of course, we've seen senior lawyers that come out to discredit that statement, including Sarah. We've seen the Attorney General return to that statement as saying that he did, did not say such a thing. And I'm very, very sure that this will go the same way of the NBC directive. NBC has no such power, particularly when the so called Twitter ban is being challenged in various courts, not only by Sarah, but by other groups in court. The least one would have expect government to do is to maintain status quo by not taking law into its own hands. But what do you expect? We've seen the same government, the same administration, disobey law for other courts time and again. We've seen the same government uh, shun orders given by the court for them to do specific acts and treat them with disdain. So what can we expect? But ultimately, we are very hopeful that the rule of law will prevail and the judiciary will come to the rescue of the citizens of this country and make decisions that are in line with the provisions of our laws as it is. You, uh, the executive cannot create offenses by mere pronouncement. The law is very clear in this regard. And uh, you one need not be a lawyer to identify the point made in section 36 of 12 of the Constitution. No one, no one can be punished for an offense that is not provided for by any written law. And there is no law to that effect presently. At any rate, the directive of the NDC that purports uh, to work from, from the on the NDC code stands um, very ineffective and inconsistent with the provisions of Section 39 of the Constitution, which guarantees the freedom of expression to every Nigeria, including those uh, media houses. And the law is claiming that regard in the type of constitutional democracy that we practice in Nigeria, that if any other law is inconsistent or conflicts with the provisions of the Constitution, of course, that law, to the extent of its inconsistency, uh, the void. And that means that the NBC Code and even the NBC Act, under which the NBC is acting, cannot stand against the provisions of Section 22 of the Constitution and Section 39 of the Constitution that guarantees Nigerians the freedom of expression. All right, thank you so much, uh, Kola Wale uh, Olua Dari, Deputy Director of um, uh, Serap. Thanks for sharing your thought and, of course, um, enlightening Nigerians on what they need to know concerning this issue of alleged uh, gagging of um, the Nigerian uh, media space. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, we'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Now, the call for the holistic restructuring of Nigeria has reached a crescendo, reverberating across the national space, while well, some have obstinately turned deaf ears to it. Nigeria can no longer be ruled the way it is being run against the ethos of equity and justice, while still under a democratic dispensation. And then for the media censorship, 
The present administration appears to be exploring all avenues to regulate the media, particularly online media. On June 4, the Minister of Information and Culture announced a ban of Twitter a few days after the microblogging site removed a tweet by President Buhari for breaching its rules. In my opinion, the Twitter suspension and the moves to censor social media would stifle freedom of expression and shrink the Nigerian civic space. My name is Justin Akadene. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.